Good morning. Well, I guess it's morning for some people, but happy Sabbath, everyone. And we're going to continue this study on the symbolic use of numbers. Uh, But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful uh, for the studies that you have um, been giving to us, um, the way that you have been leading us, and the way your your spirit brings conviction and power to our lives. We just invite your spirit's presence here now as we open your word together, as we look upon our past history and come to understand how the light has unfolded to us in the past and to have that light shine upon our path today. Be with each person, help them in their understanding, and help us as we study together. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Sabbath again. So um, obviously to this movement, uh, you know, we see lots of numbers, lots of symbols. And we know that these these symbols, that they're part of structures. They come from the prophecies of the Bible, that they're not just random numbers that we pick out of somewhere. And and the significance of a number, of course, uh, is expressed when we see it in a line of prophecy. Now, um, last week, we looked at Samuel Snow's letters, and we looked at how what happened with uh, the prediction of November 9th uh, connected to, well, it connected to our history to Samuel Snow's letters, right, so that that the no, November 9th prediction had this 391 and a half days connected to October 13th. And it was part of a structure that paralleled Samuel Snow's letters. That is, our history um, was not just arbitrary. It was something that would be impossible to have occurred by chance. So, so we can see God's divine hand in it. Now, what I wanted to look at today was what happened after we had November 9th. That is, we've gone through Ezekiel, is 390 and 40 days. And uh, we have gone through Revelation 9, Josiah Rich's understanding of those prophecies. And I have touched a little bit on how we came to July 18, 2020. So that is, we have two different symbols. From Ezekiel, we get the symbol of the 10th day of the fifth month. And you can see that on the bottom. It's kind of small. I don't know. I could zoom in there just on that. Right. So, and, and just to kind of review these really quickly. So Ezekiel is going to begin prophesying on July 21st, 592 BC on the fifth day of the fourth month. And he's going to be told to lie on his left side for 390 days. And the last day that he lies on his left side is the 10th day of the fifth month. And then the next day, August 15th, he's going to begin to lie on his right side for 40 days. And he's going to be facing the siege. Now, the symbol that's there is the 10th day of the fifth month. I mean, that's that's the primary symbol. A year later, after he finishes lying on his left side, on the 10th day of the fifth month, in 591 BC, or 590 BC, so in 591, he's going to finish lying on his left side. In 590 BC, he's going to have his his third vision. That's Ezekiel 20 uh, to 23. In chapter 24, he's going to have uh, uh, another vision. And that vision in Ezekiel 24 is going to be the one where he is told that the siege has begun, that he's supposed to mark that day, even that same day. And it's kind of interesting in the Hebrew uh, because the word there is this bone day. Now, we know that the siege is going to begin on the 10th day of the 10th month. And um, just to show you this here. Now, this this I talk about in detail in my paper on um, the wave offering in Leviticus 23, where I go through all the places where this expression, where it talks about the same day, so, so this expression here in Hebrew is literally bone day. And that is 
the Jews and many of the ancient peoples who observed the moon had these calendars. And they were made from a piece of bone and they would have a bone peg and there would be uh, three rows of ten holes. And, and they would mark off the month on this, this calendar. So, you know, they didn't have iPhones back then or Fitbits or things like that or computers, right? So they had to keep track of the days of the month. And, you know, obviously you could do that without, without a written calendar. You could remember, but people like to have something physical that they could look at. So the idea of a bone day refers to a specific date at least within a month. So he's going to write the name of this day, even the same day. Now, it's going to be the 10th day of the 10th month, but it is the 10th day. And you'll find that often that this bone day is referred to as the 10th day. There's other places where the bone day is also the 10th day. Now, this is the 10th day of the 10th month, but the temple in Jerusalem is going to be destroyed on the 10th day of the 5th month, right? Right. So that 10th day of the fifth month in which he had had this vision in chapter 20, right? He came to pass in the seventh year in the fifth month on the 10th day of the month. Uh, it could be argued that he's just referring that this is the same date, not the same month, but the same date, the same bone day in which you had received this vision regarding the destruction and siege, the siege and destruction of Jerusalem, right? And it also um, would, would go back to the last day that he laid on his left side, which would be the 10th day of the fifth month. Now, of course, he begins prophesying on the fifth day of the fourth month. So, um, but the point is that we have this specific date, the 10th day of the fifth month, right? So in this case, it's the seventh year in the fifth month and the 10th day of the month. And he's going to have his third vision. His second vision, that's the one that's on the sixth, uh, sixth month in the sixth year on the fifth day. That's going to end on the sixth day. So you get the six, six symbol, six, six, six symbol from, uh, his second vision. But this one, we get the tenth day of the fifth month. Okay. Well, Angela asks an interesting question just about, uh, can these bone calendars also represent the bones chronology that comes alive as we see it's prophetic in Ezekiel 37? The messages of Palmoni revive, explain the numerals and spans of the word. And there probably is a parallel there to the idea that um, and we often use an expression in chronology is that uh, that chronology is is the skeleton of history. And it's also the skeleton or the framework of biblical uh, prophecy. So the idea that that a date is a bone that needs to come to life as it's put together and God's spirit is breathed into it, right? And so we could say, you know, just to carry on this illustration, and, and we've used this illustration a little bit dealing with, um, you know, an anatomy chart where they all have these different transparencies and you first start with the shape of a human and you take a transparency that's the bones, Right. And then you have maybe the nerves and some of the organs and then the muscles. And, you know, finally, you keep adding these transparencies and you have a, a human, a human being. And, and so in in Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, you know, Samuel says it's the soul of history. Well, it could be. I, I don't know if it's the soul. It definitely is uh, the skeleton of history. And the stories of Scripture would be. These the sinew and the nerves and and the flesh that then is placed upon this chronology, because if you had chronology without the biblical stories to connect it together, it wouldn't really be meaningful. Right. These these stories, the reason why I find chronology so interesting is how it ties together all of these stories of the Bible and it gives significance to these stories. We start to see how they're connected. Uh, thematically and chronologically and it gives us insight into their connections but it's through the spirit that's breathed into this that allows this to come to life that it has its true meaning and significance so i mean i'm not saying that ezekiel 37 that the valley of dry bones does not 
uh, refer to God's people, as it does. But we can see that that this symbol of a bone, of a skeleton, uh, can refer to the chronology itself. So it's the means by which God is bringing to life his people in these last days. So I want to focus a little bit on this 10th day of the fifth month. Now, so if I go back to this chart, right? So we have the symbol of the 10th day of the fifth month. And in this chart, it, it was just, just the history of Ezekiel's 10th day of the fifth month. But of course, much more comes from that. You get all these 10th days of the fifth, fifth month. It's going to connect, obviously, to the 10th day of the fifth month. Uh, that's going to happen in this chart here. It kind of got part of it missing. So let me just bring this over. Yeah, this should be like a sixth. Okay. <clears throat> so the 10th day of the fifth month on the biblical calendar in 70 AD is August 6th. And that's going to be the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Now you can see uh, between the destruction of the temple in 586 and in um, 70 AD, that's 655 years. Now, we know actually that Ezekiel counts in, in based upon the, the years of Jehoiachin's captivity, which is also his own captivity. And so it's going to be in the 11th year that the temple is going to be destroyed in 586. And in 70 AD, it's then going to be the 666th year. So Ezekiel is prophesying not just about the destruction of the temple in 586, along with Jerusalem, but also the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, along with Jerusalem. And that symbol that ties it together is the 10th day of the fifth month. And, and we also have something similar with the 26th day of the fourth month that you see above here. Uh, this was Ezekiel, uh, or, or no, Josiah Lich's prophecy that parallels that of Ezekiel. So back in 2016, we recognized the 391 years and the 391 days that occur with the kings of Judah, that they were connected. And in 2018, these came together in that uh, understanding of November 9th, right? So that we had this converse. A con confirmation of November 9th on October 13th by counting 391 and a half days. And so we did that study yesterday or yesterday, last week. So you can see this here. Just this is just sort of a review of that. Here we have what happened in uh, 2018. This different structure. It's a little bit complicated there, but you can see the 391 and a, and a half Years, it says, but it's it's actually days, um, but it's represented by those years to November 9th, 2019. And let me see, you got, and there it is again. So that this is a little simpler, a little clearer, not so much stuff to distract you. And so that November 9th, 2019 date has this connection to Samuel Snow's letters. So that there is the structure of Samuel Snow's letters. And so we showed it here in these two diagrams here at the top. Well, what happened after that is we're going to have this chart here. I'm going to move this up. I think this is what I want. Okay, so so this just shows that there is this connection uh, in Samuel Snow's letters with the 391 and a half, that if you count from June 22nd, that's his third letter, and you counted 391 and a half, you'd come to July 18th, um, 1845. And uh, so, the, which was, which was interesting. So, so it means there was built into this, this July 18th um, structure. Now I'm just trying to find the chart that we use. So there you see it at the bottom again, July 18th, 1845. And I've got so many charts here. Um, so which is the one I actually used? Okay, so this was my original presentation dealing with Samuel Snow's letters. I should have had this set up, but wasn't sure how I was going to do this. Ah, here it is. Uh, so what I did 
um, in this chart that you see on the bottom is I took Samuel Snow's letters and I took, I, I put these dates here. You see a June 22nd, 2019. That's, that's, it's, it's not quite how I drew this out because you see Samuel Snow's letters. What I did is I put June 22nd, 2019 and I counted 391 and a half days and it came to July 18, 2020. Now that is a Julian date. So it would have been on November, I think like November 2nd. Um, that I'm going to do this presentation in 2018. So I'm just going to check on the calendar here, uh, what the date was. So I'm at the School of the Prophets. I'd been doing lots of presentations. We had had the camp meeting. Jeff had done his, uh, his summary on the uh, 28th of October. And it's going to be on that Friday, I believe, uh, at Vespers on November 2nd uh, that I'm going to present this. And I'd figured it out that day. So, um, or at least partly. And, and I'm actually going to present this um, in a study. And it, it's on my YouTube page. And in this study, I show that we have, based on the 10th day of the fifth month, that we have July 18, 2020, as the 10th day of the fifth month. And that, that's going to mark based based upon uh, Ezekiel's prophecy and Josiah Lich's prophecy together. But Ezekiel's is the one that gives us the 10th day of the fifth month that we're going to have this day, July 18, 2020. So that's the first time July 18, 2020 is presented. I believe it's on November 2nd. And I'm also then going to present a week later, July 18, 2020 on the Gregorian calendar. So, so I kind of need to look this up and make sure I get that right exactly when I presented these. But July 18, 2020 comes from the 10th day of the fifth month symbol, but is also connected to the structure of Samuel Snow's letters and to the 391 and a half. So when we get this um, July 18th date uh, as a Julian date, we're still not we're still not sure about what to do with that date. That is, we don't have the second witness yet. We just have the 10th day of the fifth month. We don't have the 26th day of the fourth month. And it's going to be that Stephen is going to write me, and he's going to make an argument for July 18, uh, based upon a count of a half of a year as being 180 days of a prophetic year, and counting 180 years from 1840 uh, to 2020. So he's he's going to give a type of confirmation. But what I do is I then use Ezekiel's prophecy, not Ezekiel's, Josiah Lich's prophecy, uh, to, to confirm the 26th day of the fourth month. But I'm not going to address that right now. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So the 10th day of the fifth month, and I'm going to... Just move through some of these slides that have it. Okay, so there's lots of things that that's not the ones I want. I get to go back. Okay, so this goes back to a study on the week of Christ. Now, I know this study has still confused people to a large degree. But in 2018, my primary study that I'm doing is dealing with Christ's 70th week. That is, in 2017... We had studied Samuel Snow's letters. We had put them on a line and we had noticed that Samuel Snow had addressed this idea of the midst of the week. And so in, um, I think is late January, early February, I started doing this study on the 70th week. I was looking at this midst of the week, trying to understand its significance. And so we all had this, this impression that, you know, the 70th week is 25, 20 days because, you know, we're taking a, a prophetic symbolic uh, seven years. And there's 25, 20 days in seven years that are of 360 days. But in reality, that wouldn't be the case. That is, Christ is is not living with the 360 day calendar. At that time, they have a calendar that's the biblical calendar. 
and it has years of 354 days, give or take a day. And then every two or three years, they have a year that has uh, 384, give or take a day, right? And so those over time, uh, in a metonic cycle, for instance, in a period of 19 years, you're going to have uh, 12 what they call common years and 12 uh, embolismic years. So the common years are just 354, and then the embolismic years are 384. And so you're going to have uh, seven of those of the embolismic and 12 common. So it's going to be 19 years. It's going to be a period of 235 months um, on, you know, the, the months that you see if you observe the moon, not the months that we have on our calendar, right? So some of the years will have 13 months and some will have 12. So if you had uh, seven years and you had uh, 12 months in a year, uh, how many months would you have? Anybody good at math in their head? So if you had 12 times seven, you would have 84 months, right? Now, what if we had uh, 19 years? You'd have 228, and then you would have seven years where you have an extra month. So you would add seven years to 228, and you get 235. So you have 235 months in a period of 19 years. Okay? So hopefully that, and that's called a metonic cycle, named after meton a Greek uh, mathematician or something. So, so, but in the week of Christ, that means we're going to have some years that are going to have 13 months. We're actually going to have two years that have 13 months. The other ones have 12 months. So it's not going to be 84 months. It's going to be, you know, 86 months. Okay. That makes sense. And, um, so it's going to go from the 10th day of the seventh month to the 10th day of the seventh month. It's actually going to be 87 months. There's going to be three, three years in there actually that have, um, so it's going to be 87 months. That's what it is. So if I take 87 and I multiply it by 29.530587, I'm going to get, uh, 2,569 days. So how many days more is that? Then 25, 20 days. 2,569 is how many days more in that week of Christ? Is that 49? Yeah, so 49 days more, right? So if we do the cardinal count, it's going to be 25, 2,569 days. It's 49 days more than 25, 20 days. Now, what you're looking at here right now is how we imagine the week of Christ. You know, we're going to start it on the 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD and it ended on the 10th day of the seventh month in 34 AD. And in the center, you're going to have the cross. Now, we had people talking about how there is uh, 25, 20 uh, evening and morning sacrifices offered from when Jesus is baptized uh, to when he is crucified. But, you know, we now symbolically, that's true, but literally it can't be. Now, what's the first thing we notice about this chart here? If if Jesus is baptized on the 10th day of the seventh month and he's crucified on the 14th day of the first month, we can see that it's it's not 25 tw or 1260 days to from the baptism to the crucifixion. Right. And why not? Like, even if we're not counting literal days, we're just counting symbolic days. Why is it not 1260 days? I think that even the baptism would have would have fall would have fallen on the tenth or the seventh month. So you you think what that it didn't? I think I think if at all, like as you've said, the baptism mm -hmm. could have also fallen on the twelfth on the tenth of the seventh month, not the fourteenth yeah. of the first month. Right. So so the baptism would be on the tenth day of the seventh month, but he dies on the fourteenth day of the first month. And if you had 30 day months, uh, that would be 1264 days. No, we don't have 30 day months, right? Because they didn't use 30 day months and 360 day years, right? Uh, they observed the sky. So, um, but you can see there that it still doesn't work out to 1260. 
and then on the other side, you're going to have 1,256 days. So it's going to be four days short. So even if we took this symbolic uh, period of 25, 20 days, it doesn't work out to 1,260 days, which would be 25, 20 uh, uh, morning and evening sacrifices. So, so it just doesn't work. But, you know, this is, of course, just dealing with symbolism. If we actually de deal with... Um, and that's not the chart I want. It's this one here. So in this chart, well, there's a lot happening here. But you see, I put 1260 days on either side of the cross. And I put the actual 10th day of the seventh month in 30 AD, or in 27 AD, pardon me, when Jesus is baptized. And the actual 10th day of the seventh month in 34 AD when Stephen is stoned. And you can see that if I put 1260 days on either side of the cross, that to get to the 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD, it's going to be 46 days short. That is, uh, the period of time is actually 1306 days from the 10th day of the seventh month when Jesus is baptized until uh, the 14th day of the first month when he is crucified. So it's actually a lot longer than than 1260 days. It's not just, you know, uh, four days longer. It's it's actually 46 days longer. Now, the first thing I noticed when I saw this is is I recognized that this 46 days that we could look at this in comparison to this. So what you have here is um, the week of Christ in a symbolic sense. Right. You have 27 A.D., the three and a half years, 1260 days, 25, 20 days. Uh, then you have the 1260 days on the other side. And then you got this 25, 20 years of the satanic covenant week. Right. So paganism uh, is counterfeit of the earthly sanctuary. It's going to scatter the po power of the holy people for time, times and a half. That's Daniel 12, 7. And then from 538 AD, you have three and a half years of the treading down of God's people uh, by the papal power, Daniel 725. So, so I recognized that I could take this going from right to left and that I put on the bottom. I could put that, uh, two periods of 1260 days. 500, 538 AD represents the cross in the counterfeit, right? So I have the cross is April 27, 31 AD. And on the bottom, I have 538 AD. I'm just going to zoom in just so some people might not be able to see this really well. And then I have um, 723 BC. That's when the 1260 begins for the daily. And then I have 1798 on the left side. And so you can see on the bottom, I'm going from right to left, the way that Hebrew is written. On the top, I'm going from left to right. So I'm just going, you know, as we normally would draw a line, the left side's going to be uh, earlier and the right side's going to be later. But the bottom is the opposite, which which is totally allowed, And it, but it's interesting. And then that means that we can go to 46 days, which is going to represent Jesus' baptism in 27 AD. It's going to be September 30th, the 10th day of the seventh month. And that lines up with 1844 on the bottom. Right now, when I first presented this, it's I'm going to present this at Collins Place. Um, I'm going to I'm going to draw this out. I'm going to show the literal week of Christ, and I'm going to talk about this tenth day of the, the seventh month and how it lines up with 1844, and um, and that this is showing this prophetic mirror. And the question was asked. Um, and this is going to be Bonnie who asked the question. She says, well, what other date would you put here uh, that would line up uh, with, that would sort of confirm this, that would line up with another date? Okay. Now, at the time, I didn't have uh, some of the, the tools and resources I have here. So it actually is August 6th, but it's the 10th day of the fifth month. So what we have here is... Uh, by 38 AD and 70 AD. So 70 AD 
is going to be the 10th day of the fifth month. So, so what I did roughly at the time is I said, well, okay, well, if I was going to pick a date, so before we even talked about 70 AD or anything, and she asked this question, I started thinking, what date would confirm the week of Christ? Now, the week of Christ study comes from Daniel chapter 9. So let's go there. So in Daniel chapter 9, we're all familiar with the 70 weeks. But it's these last two verses of Daniel 9 that are the important ones. It says, after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So it's going to talk about the crucifixion of Christ in the midst of the week. And what's the next thing it's going to talk about? The destruction of Jerusalem by Titus, right? That's that's going to be Rome. The prince that shall come is Titus. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So that's referring to 70 AD. And, and then it says in verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And the midst, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. And again, that's going to be referring to the destruction of the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD. This one's, you know, more sacrifice and oblation, really talking about making the temple desolate. So it's really about the destruction of the temple. So I said, well, if I was going to look for a date, on this chart to confirm that this is correct, I would look for the date in 70 AD. And so I would put 70 AD on there and see if I get the 10th day of the fifth month, right? So before I had ever done this, I just said, that's what I would do, right? She asked the question, what date would you use? And I said, well, the destruction of the temple on the 10th day of the fifth month in 70 AD. Now, the number of days uh, from 538 A.D., uh, or, or pardon me, from uh, the number of years from 538 A.D. to 70 A.D. is 468 years, right? Simple, simple math. You just subtract 70 from 538, you're going to get 468. So what I did then is I counted 468 days. Uh, from April 27, 31 AD. Now, you could count it cardinally and or, or ordinally. Now, originally, I just counted it cardinally. And when I did that, it came to August 7th. But actually, August 7th isn't the 10th day of the fifth month. It's August 6th. And I realized later that I needed to count it ordinally. That is, the first day is going to be the day of the cross, just in, in how that we, we did it. And it's kind of hard to explain. I'd have to show you. I, I drew it all out. Um, so the 10th day of the fifth month is, oh, and that's not correct. So I, I have to remember this. So actually in 70 AD, it's going to be August 6th. But in 32 AD, it's going to be August 7th. That's That's what I did wrong. I always forget this. Because remember, this on the top, it's not giving me 70 AD, right? You can see that, that it's 32 AD, right? So I'm counting 32 AD. But what I'm going to find out is the date on the biblical calendar that's 468 days after April 27th, 31 AD is going to be August 7th, right? So August 7th. And I'm just going to check this now if this was correct. So I'm going to go to the calendar converter here. And so, so here's what we're going to do. No, it's going to be August 6th. And I'm just going to see how I do this. So, so I might have had it right. So yeah, so that's right. So it should be August 6th. Sorry about that. I just haven't corrected some of my old charts because this chart I made back in 2018 before we had the calendar converted, right? So anyway, when I looked it up and I figured out the biblical calendar, it was the 10th day of the fifth month. And the 10th day of the fifth month, according to the calendar converter, is August 6th. And it's the 468 days, okay? So, so what this shows is that in this week of Christ's study, 
I could mark 70 AD and it would give me the 10th day of the fifth month. Does that, does that make sense to people? Because some people it doesn't. But, you know, I don't know if I don't explain it well, but we have dates on the top. So you count 468 days from when Jesus is crucified and you're going to come to the 10th day of the fifth month in 32 AD. And that's going to line up on the bottom with 70 AD, the date in which the temple is destroyed in 70 AD. It's not destroyed in 32 AD. It just gives you the biblical date. Just like on, on the left side, it's going to give you uh, 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD, but that's going to line up with 1844. Yeah, okay, I see the mirror now. <laughs> okay. Right. I see because we have the four. Yeah, now you yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can see the prophetic mirror. And then we count 19 yeah. days, it's going to bring us to 1863, which is actually September 11th uh, on the on the Julian calendar in 27 AD. And, and we could keep moving to the left, and that's going to bring us to the future, right? So back at this time, I just had up uh, 2017 was Passover, April 10th in 27 AD. There's a whole other story behind this, but I, I don't want to folk, I don't want to confuse things too much here at this point. I just want to point out simply that we have this symbol of the 10th day of the fifth month, and that this symbol is attached to the week of Christ study. So in 2018, that's what I'm presenting. I present the week of Christ study um, from, and, and I just want to get the right date here because I mentioned it last night in my study. So Jeff is going to come uh, to Alberta in 2018. He's going to present that, that study that Stephen did uh, regarding the time in the holy place and in the most holy place that we looked at last night. But we're going to we're going to have this camp meeting and that's going to be from August 6th to August 11th. So I was thinking it was August 11th to 15th, but it's August 6th to August 11th. So it's kind of interesting that it started on August 6th and that it's going to end on August 11th. Right. So so it was just an interesting little detail, I thought, uh, when I was looking at this. So it's August 6th to 11th. So I'm going to present the week of Christ study uh, during that. Uh, camp meeting. And, and I believe that Jeff actually doesn't show up on the first day. Though. I think he shows up on like the 8th or of August or something like that. But, I, but I'm not certain. But anyway, the, the camp meeting is from 6th to 11th. And um, so I'm going to be studying and presenting this week of Christ. Now, I get invited during that camp meeting, well, the day after the camp meeting, Jeff, and, or the day, I think actually on August 11th, he invites me. And then Heidi and I give our response to him the next day, which is Sunday. Um, we say, yeah, okay, we're, we're planning on coming. You know, at first we were talking about like having some kind of fleece put out, but Jeff just says, you know, you just got to come, right? So, so we made plans then, uh, to go. And, uh, so we ended up getting there at, uh, at the end of August. Um, we got to, Arkansas, and we stayed there until uh, in February. So we came back in February, I believe. Could have been late January. Can't remember the date right now. But anyway, during that time when I was there, I presented on the week of Christ. So I presented it at the camp meeting in the summer, and my main uh, interest was to present that at the School of the Prophets. And it was actually the two presentations that I had on the week of Christ at the camp meeting in October of 2018, uh, that was just from my study that I had been presenting, you know, through that time. So I was going to present it at the camp meeting there again in Arkansas. But it occurred that on, on October 13th that I had this uh, information regarding the 391 and a half. And so I did two studies on that as well. This 10th day of the fifth month study, you can see why it becomes important. So I've now focused on this week of Christ. I've focused on the 10th day of the fifth month. And we now have this new prediction, November 9th, 2019. And in that prediction, these different 
studies come together, right? So part of the whole issue with these studies, when we go back here, here, this one on the bottom, right? So now we have this November 9th, 2019, but we have symbols here that, that tie us to the prophecy of Josiah Litch, the July 27th prediction of Daniel from Brazil, uh, the August 11th, that's the center of this. The 391 and a half days connects us to Ezekiel and to Josiah Litch's prophecy, right? Uh, the 120 days that I marked there, the 126 days, all these things that parallel with Samuel Snow's letters. Um, you can see above there is these two Pentecosts. So in 2017 and 2018, or not Pentecost, but 9-11 prayers, one at Pentecost. And I'm trying to figure this out. It says Sabbath begins. This one should be the Sabbath ends. So these are just old charts. On June 12th, and this is going to be June 9th, not June 2nd. So you're going to have the, the June 2nd prayer. That's going to be in 2017 at 9, 11 p.m. He makes this prayer. And, oh, wait, no, never mind. I'm reading this wrong. Yeah, this is just 2017. This is 2018. Yeah, I, I think I made this mistake. So he's going to have this prayer. It's going to be 120 minutes that he presents. So it's kind of weird the way I drew up this diagram. So this is one I actually presented um, at the camp meeting in 2018. So it's the end of Pentecost. So it's really going to start like a 7, 11 p.m. that he's going to start his presentation. Now, some criticism has happened that it wasn't actually 120 minutes. It was an hour and 20 minutes that his presentation was. Uh, and the idea is that 120, 120 is a symbol of Pentecost. But anyway, that, that was stuff that was presented in 2018. But, but at the bottom, we have this 391 and a half days. And I'm directed to a Josiah Lich's prophecy and to Ezekiel's prophecy. So both of those prophecies come together. Let's see what this next chart is. Yeah, this is, this is connecting, um, that prayer. 391 and a half brings me to June 15th, 2018. It's June 15th. Anyway, that's too complicated to explain. We looked at this one and there we have. So I'm trying to find the chart. So this, this one here, these, some of these charts are confusing. I, I, I should really delete some of my old charts because they just kind of get in my way. So we're going to have Samuel Snow's letters gives us this July 18th date, right? It, it, and it gives us this November 9th confirmation. And which is the one I used? And I might not have drawn this out, actually. Um, that could be why I don't have it. Because at the time, I drew it on, on the whiteboard when I presented. So when I presented it the first time, I had not actually figured it out completely, right? This connection between Samuel Snow's letters. So I, I think this, this chart on the bottom would be the closest, right? It's the one that I showed you earlier. You can see I have this July 18, 2020, but that is a Julian date, the 10th day of the fifth month, not a Gregorian date. And so we did a bunch of stuff here. I'm just skipping through this quickly. So I think that's it when it comes to these charts. Ah, here's the one I want. It's the one on the top. So this is what Stephen and I did. Though he wasn't, he wasn't there. He was in, in Ireland. So we took Josiah Lich's prophecy and I already had July 18, 2020, Julian, the 10th day of the fifth month. And then Stephen took this 391 years, which is 391 years and 15 days. 15 days is an hour. So an hour, day, a month and a year. You can see those there. And he said, well, it's a half a month, but we're using a half a year. And a half a year is six months. And six months is 100, prophetic time is 180 days. So if we count 180 years from 1840, it'll bring us to 2020. Now, I can't remember the, the math he did. He made a mistake. 
But then what I looked at simply was the symbol of the date, the 26th day of the fourth month. And so we found that the 26th day of the fourth month was July 18, 2020, just as the 10th day of the fifth month was July 18 on the Julian calendar in 2020. Now, the, the chance that that would occur, that these two symbols, the one from Ezekiel and the one from Josiah Lich's prophecy, and the one from Ezekiel is based upon the prophecy of Josiah, right, to, to come to the understanding of it, the chance that they would both yield a July 18th date in 2020 is extremely unlikely because they're 13 days apart. The 26th day of the fourth month and the 10th day of the fifth month are 13 days apart. And it just so happens in our century and in the 1900s as well, that there's 13 days between the Julian and the Gregorian. The, the Julian calendar is 13 days behind, right? So you have to wait. They just happen to line up on that on that day. <laughs> yeah, they just happen to line up. Like so, to me, this was absolutely incredible that that would occur by chance. Now, um, I am going to do a presentation after I did that presentation at uh, so in 2018. I'm not talking about a presentation I'm going to do now, but I did a presentation on on Sabbath, November 10th. I believe. And that presentation, so I, I had figured out this July 18, 2020. And, and then I did a presentation on Ezekiel's wheels. So those are the wheels within wheels. And, and that presentation, I, I was looking at this paper dealing with the Mayan calendar. So I'm going to show you this here. Now, we, we have some problems with our calendar converter when we go way back in the past. So uh, sometimes these things are off a little bit, but I'll, I'll show you uh, what we have here. I can't remember. This is uh, calendar converter version two. I think version one is actually correct. I think this one's not. But what I'm going to do is uh, bring you to uh, this date. Now, uh, so you can see on the Mayan calendar here at the bottom, just set it to zero. So when I set it to zero, it's going to show up at the top the ninth day of the fifth month. And it's going to show August 11th. Now, this is incorrect. That is, the biblical date should be the 10th day of the fifth month based upon how the calendar was done before the flood. So there, there is a difference of the pre-flood calendar. And, and even the calendar after the flood, then the calendar that was given to the Israelites at the Exodus. So there's going to be slight differences there. But here in this history, what I found is uh, this guy made this, this statement in that the Mayan calendar is uh, going to begin 0000, zero, 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 zero five zeros on August 11th. 3113 BC. And, and he's correct, right? Now that date happens to be the 10th day of the fifth month. That is, if you go by the moon, that is, when we look in the past, before the Exodus, they're going to go by the moon every month. After the Exodus, they're going to have a preset 3029, 3029, 3029 for the first six months. And then after that, they're going to use the moon. So I'm not going to go into the history of that. But anyway, this August 11th date, when when I looked at the moon cycle, I found that this was uh, the 10th day of the fifth month in 331 BC. But notice it's a Gregorian date, right? Normally, when we talk about dates in biblical history, we use Julian dates. And, and this guy actually made the assumption it was a Julian date. So what, what I first looked for was the Julian date, uh, 3113 BC. And when I, when I looked at August 11th, Aaron, this is the Julian date. I have to go there. And when I looked at August 11th in 3113 BC, and again, this, this calendar converter is off here in these old dates. You'll notice that it's it's actually 
not 0, 0, 0, 0. There's a 17 here. And that 17, you would multiply by 20. And 17 by 20 is, is what, 340? So this is actually 340 days into the Mayan calendar. But this date here is the 26th day of the fourth month. So it says the 24th day of the fourth month, but it's actually the 26th day of the fourth month if we use the biblical calendar. So when I first looked at it, I saw this 26th day of the fourth month. So that's the one date that we have for July 18th. But then when I looked at the actual date, I saw that it was the 10th day of the fifth month. That August 11th, 3113 B.C. Gregorian was the 10th day of the fifth month. And 3113 BC, Julian was the 26th day of the fourth month. And that's not to be expected, right? It's not something that you would expect that you're going to find that coincidence. Okay. So this 10th day of the fifth month, the destruction of the temple, why is Ezekiel drawing us to that date? What would be the significance for us? So we expected the 10th day of the fifth month uh, to have to deal with in 2020 um, because in Ezekiel, uh, certain of the elders of Israel are going to come and sit before him. So if you go to Ezekiel 20, it came to pass in the seventh year in the fifth month in the 10th day of the month that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. And so originally I said, well, maybe you know, after the destruction of Nashville, 13 days later, maybe the church is going to come and ask us. You know, that was the guess that I had made. But in these chapters, chapter 20, 21, 22, 23, he's going to describe the destruction of Jerusalem that's coming. Right. Which is going to happen on the 10th day of the fifth month, especially in regard to the temple. The, is that rabbinic? Rabbinic 10th day, fifth month? No, it's the biblical. Well, well, the rabbis didn't exist back then. So, okay. So, so technically, it's going to be a, according to the, the Babylonian calendar, because that's the calendar they're using at that time. Okay. So, so yeah. So when we go to, uh, I'll show you here. I'll go back to this calendar converter. Yeah, and Iran and I really need to clean up some of the problems with this calendar converter on the old dates. They, they drift a bit. So, uh, works all for all the, you know, the other dates, not for some of these dates way back before the flood. Yeah. So if we're going to go to, uh, in 591 BC and you want to go to the 10th day of the fifth month, August 15th. <clears throat> Well, the 10th day, of the, so you're going to see that this, the, this is the biblical calendar up here, but the biblical calendar is a fixed calendar. And down here, we have uh, the Babylonian calendar. So, yeah, so it's going to be, yeah, so this is August 14th, 591. So that's going to be, and you see here it says the 10th day. Oh, of, the fifth oh, day. August 15th. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be the day when he lies on his right side. So this is going to, so this is the day when he finishes lying on his left side. And you can well, see that it's the, tenth day of the fifth. it's the 10th day of the fifth month on the Babylonian calendar. I'm just showing you that they're different. Okay. So the Babylonian calendar is the 10th day of the fifth month. And the biblical calendar had the 11th day of the fifth month. And this is the last day he lies on his left side, right? The next day he's going to lie on his right side. That's going to be August 15th. Okay. I see. No. Right. But the Babylonian and biblical calendar don't line up in that year. So when we go to his vision, his third vision that happens on the 10th day of the fifth month, you can see that in that year they happen to line up. Right. So on the Babylonian calendar, it says the 10th day of Abu. And then. Up here, the biblical calendar says the 10th day of Av, right? So they happen to line up in that year, but not in the previous year, okay? And you can see the rabbinic says the 11th day of the sixth month. So the rabbinic is quite a bit off, like a month and a day, okay? 
So some people try to use the rabbinic, but it, it drifts quite a bit, especially as you go back in the past. It can be like three days off. So, uh, because it's following a metonic cycle, which isn't exact. But anyway. So you say that, the safe bet is to use the biblical, biblical calendar? Well, generally we use the biblical calendar, but we have to fix it in these earlier dates before the flood and, and so forth, because sometimes it's off by a day, not always, sometimes. And then, and then, and then in this case, during the Babylonian captivity, the Jews are using the Babylonian calendar, right? So, I mean, Ezekiel's in Babylon. He's, he's using the Babylonian calendar. He's, he's not, he's not using the biblical calendar. And, and we can demonstrate this other ways too. But, um, anyway, so, so dealing with this 10th day of the fifth month, it is a symbol. And the symbol is that certain of the elders of Israel are going to inquire. So I still believe that this symbol that, that we had, uh, relates to something that's going to happen in this movement. At some point in this movement, people are going to inquire of us. And that's symbolized by the 10th day of the fifth month, when Jerusalem is destroyed. And it, and it could be when the Seventh-day Adventist church falls apart or something. I don't know. Like, just ceases to exist. I have no idea. All I know is it's a symbol. And that this symbol shows up in our prediction of July 18, 2020, and it shows up in impossible ways. Okay? And any final questions on this? Hopefully that was simple enough. Well, I tried to make it, it simple. I think it answered my question. <laughs> well, yeah, there's I, a couple dates there. Yeah, I tend to rush through it, you know, lots of times, and I, I try to take my time on this, and, and we're going to go over these things again. Uh, next week, I want to look at some some more of the symbols regarding the 26th day of the fourth month. So we're going to look at Josiah Lich's prophecy in a bit more detail in regarding the prediction. And and definitely how we tried to connect it to Nashville, what that was all about. So we're, you know, we're going to start looking more into July 18th, because we're now starting to get into uh, 2019 and, and a lot of the symbols that we came to understand. And we're going to look at the Mayan calendar a bit more as well. And why I believe July 18 failed and etc. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Um, just um, concerning the baptism of Christ on the 10th day of the seventh month. Mm -hmm. Would they, would they not have been observing that as a fast day? Yeah. Yeah. Of course they would. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, so we can't prove that Jesus is baptized on that day. But, but I think it's most, we know the 70th week starts on the 10th day of the fifth month, or 10th day of the seventh month, pardon me, because it ends on the 10th day of the seventh month. And the 70 weeks begins on the 10th day of the seventh month. And the 2300 days begins and ends on the 10th day of the seventh month. And so the most likely thing is he actually gets baptized on that day. But, you know, maybe he was baptized a few days later or something. You know, I, I don't know. But, but I, I just put that as the baptism day. Yes, but, but yeah. they wouldn't have been they wouldn't have been doing anything with the, the scapegoat or anything like that. Uh, oh, oh, you're saying like in the temple itself? Well, yes. the, the question is so so first off, they had a fast day, but they don't have the Ark of the Covenant in in the sanctuary, uh, and I don't believe that they were observing the Day of Atonement in a strict accordance with uh, the guidelines given in Leviticus because they couldn't. And we know that in Nehemiah that they couldn't observe the Day of Atonement. And that's why they were mourning. But they decided to still keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So my understanding is that the Jews just would fast on the Day of Atonement. But they they weren't observing uh, all of the offerings because they didn't have uh, the Ark. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Now, I could be wrong about it, but but I know they don't have the Ark. So they, they did have the other furniture, though. They did have the lampstand and the altar of incense and the table of showbread, but the ark had been hidden by Jeremiah before the destruction of the first temple. Okay, good question. Okay, well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the Sabbath and for the time that we have together. 
I pray for a blessing for each person and uh, that you can uh, continue to be with us throughout these Sabbath hours. Thank you for loving us, for caring for us. And uh, we pray for one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.